And here is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday. It's the 12th of November, 2020. It's the birthday of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, born 1815 in Johnstown, New York. She was a famous feminist, women's rights pioneer, abolitionist, who worked in partnership with Susan B. Anthony to convince the world that women had the right to vote and buy property and divorce their husbands if they so chose. Stanton was married. She married a fellow abolitionist, Henry Stanton. They settled in Seneca Falls, New York, and they had seven children. So Stanton was unable to travel very much because of her children. She referred to herself as a caged lioness. Susan B. Anthony had no children. She was free to travel. And so Stanton wrote the speeches, and Susan B. Anthony delivered them. Stanton said, I forged the thunderbolts, and she fired them. And even though she was not allowed to vote legally, Elizabeth Cady Stanton became the first woman to run for Congress. 1866, she lost. She received only 24 votes, but it was a start. She died in 1902, 18 years before women were given the right to vote. It's the birthday of the sculptor Auguste Rodin, Paris, 1840, created the masterpiece The Thinker. Rodin, who said, nothing is a waste of time if you use the experience wisely. It's the birthday of the philosopher and literary critic Roland Barthes, born in Cherbourg, France, in 1915. Studied literature and philosophy, but instead of writing long books about great works of literature, he wrote short essays about popular culture. One of the first critics to apply literary theory to things like movies and toys, wrestling matches, strip teasing. It was Roland Barthes who was responsible for college courses now on subjects like Bugs Bunny and the Beach Boys, his essays collected in his book Mythologies and Empire of Signs. It's the birthday of the novelist Catherine Weber, New York City, 1955. Her novels include Objects in the Mirror Are Closer Than They Appear and The Little Women, a retelling of the Louisa May Alcott story, and Triangle, about the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire in 1911. She wrote about it because her grandmother worked at the factory, left her job two years before the fire because she was pregnant with Catherine Weber's father. And it's the birthday of the singer-songwriter Neil Young, born in Toronto, 1945, stricken with polio when he was six, nearly died from it, learned to play the ukulele, dropped out of high school, formed a band, the Squires, 1963, playing in coffee houses and clubs around Winnipeg, toured on the Canadian folk circuit, and then formed a band that became popular, Buffalo Springfield, in 1966. Neil Young, who wrote his autobiography called Waging Heavy Peace. Here's a poem for today by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Knight's Tomb. Where is the grave of Sir Arthur O'Kellan? Where may the grave of that good man be? By the side of a spring, on the breast of Helvellyn, under the twigs of a young birch tree. The oak that in summer was sweet to hear, and rustled its leaves in the fall of the year, and whistled and roared in the winter alone, is gone, and the birch in its stead is grown. The knight's bones are dust, and his good sword rust. His soul is with the saints, I trust. Wrote Samuel Taylor Coleridge. That's the Writer's Almanac for Thursday, November the 12th, funded by donations from listeners like you, now available on PRX for distribution by your local radio station. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.